G'day everyone, today we're going to be making an ability system in Unity using scriptable objects. The best part about using scriptable objects is that it makes things extremely customizable and easy for you to implement into your own projects. Let's jump right in. So when developing any system, before jumping in, it's important to break down the problem into smaller parts so it's easier to understand and create. Here's what we want to happen. We want a player who will move into a power-up, gain an effect, and destroy the power-up, and then potentially undo the effect after a period of time. If we pick out the important components, we're going to need four things. First, we're going to need a player character who we're going to modify in some way. Second, we're going to need a power-up object that a player can pick up or interact with. Third, we're going to need effects that modify a player's behavior, whether it's health, speed, jump height, etc. And fourth, we're going to need some form of timer so that we can undo these effects after a while. Now that we've identified exactly what we need, we can determine how each part should interact with one another. So the player and power up will be their own separate objects, but as for the effects, these will be scriptable objects that we can assign to a power up. This way we can make prefabs of the power ups and swap the effects around with little effort. Then, when the player collides with the power-up, the power-up is going to give an effect to the player. Since the player has all the stats, it should be the player's job to apply that effect. And since the player is handling the effect, they should also keep track of the timer. We've got our plan, so let's build it. So this is the scene that we're going to be working in today. It's a small little platforming scene that I put together using the free platform game assets from the Unity Assets Store. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check those out for yourself. Now the first thing we need to do is make a player. I'm not going to go into too much detail about this because it's largely going to depend on the game that you're making, but I'll give you a quick rundown of what I'm using so you can follow along with me. I have a game object called Bazza and they have a sprite renderer, a player controller script that I'll run through in a moment, a basic player health script with a health and max health, a circle collider and a rigid body 2D, and I've just upped the gravity scale so it's a bit more weight to them and all of the tiles in the scene just have a box collider and most importantly, they're on the ground layer. If we check out the code, we have four variables. We have our movement speed, which is how fast the player moves, jump power, which is how high they jump, and then a reference to our rigid body and our circle collider. And this just has one method, the update method. First, we get our horizontal input, which is either the A and D keys or the left and right arrow keys. And then we'll move our character depending on that direction by our movement speed. Then we check if our player is on the ground and we do that by doing a ray cast downwards and seeing if we collide with any tiles on the ground layer. Then if we get any input on the vertical axis, which is the W or up arrow keys in this instance, and we're on the ground, then we'll apply our jump power to our character. Next thing we need to do is to make the power up pickup that our player is going to be colliding with. So we'll start by making an empty game object and I'll call mine power up pickup and we'll reset its position to zero, zero. Actually, I might move it across a bit more. Then we'll need to add a sprite renderer so we can see it in the scene. Now you can use any sprite you want. I have this grayscale coin, which will do quite nicely. And I'll go to change its color just so it's a bit easier to see. Next, we need to give it a collider. This can be any type of uh, collider. I'm going to give it a box collider 2D. And the important thing here is to set it as is trigger because that's how we're going to be using collision detection for this. Next thing we need to do is in our scripts, we need to create a new C sharp script and we'll call it power up pickup. Perfect, and let's open that up. First up, we can get rid of our start and update method since we won't be needing those, but we will need a void activate power up. And what this is going to do, this is going to give an effect to our player. And then we're going to destroy the pickup. And how are we going to call this method? We're going to use on trigger enter 2D. And this takes a collider 2D called col. And what happens is, since we have our collider set to is trigger, whenever an object with a rigid body and a collider enters into our trigger, it's going to call this method. And we will call our activate power up. And just to show that it's working, we can put a debug.log and we can say pickup worked. Now to destroy the pickup, we can call destroy and put game object here. 
Now let's save and head back into Unity. So now we can drag our power up pickup onto our game object. And if we now press play, we can now walk over our pickup. It'll be destroyed. And if we look in our console, we get pickup worked. All right, now the next thing we need to do, we need to head to our scripts and we need to create a new C sharp script and we'll call this power up modifier. And let's open that up. All right, so we can get rid of our start and update methods again, and we can replace mono behavior with scriptable object. This is going to allow us to make copies of these power-ups with small variations, and it's also going to make it super easy for us to swap these power-ups with one another. Now, since this is the base class that all our power-ups are going to inherit from, we're going to add the keyword abstract to the front here. What this is going to do is going to prevent us from making copies of this specific class since all our other modifiers are going to inherit from this and we want to make copies of those instead. Now, what we're going to do here is add public abstract void activate game object and we'll call this target. So this game object is going to be the target that we're going to apply our modifier to and you might notice that there's no code for this specific method and that's because we've added the keyword abstract to the front. What this means is when we inherit from this class, we must have our own implementation of this line. So we're going to head back into Unity and we're going to add another script. So create C sharp script and we're going to call this one health modifier. Once again, we can get rid of our start and update methods and we can replace mono behavior, but this time we're going to replace it with pickup modifier. Now, if you'll see here, we're actually getting an error. And that's because, remember when we made our template, we made this method abstract, that means we must have it here. And since we don't have it, it's throwing an error. So to fix that, we'll do public override this time, void, activate, and our game object, target. So we will want a public int health value. This is going to be the amount of health we're going to add to our player. Var player health equals target dot get component player health. So now we have a reference to the player health on our player character. And now we can go player health dot health plus equals health value. Now one final thing we have to add up the top here and we go create asset menu, menu name. And this is going to be the path that we will uh, follow to create this object. So we'll do power up effect and let's do health modifier. Now that we have some definitions for our power up modifiers, let's head over to our player controller. Since our player controller is going to be applying our effects, we'll need to give it a method. So let's go public void and let's call this apply power up modifier and this will take a power up modifier which we will call power up modifier and all we're going to do here is go power up modifier dot activate and we'll pass in the player game object here now let's head to our power up pickup and finish this off we can give this a public power up modifier and we'll call this power up modifier now in here we need a reference to our player controller so we'll go player controller player controller and now we can replace this comment with player controller dot apply power up modifier that we just created with power up modifier the modifier that's attached to this pickup now if you look up here our activate power up method is throwing an error and that's because we're not passing in a player controller so to fix this we'll go var player controller equals col dot get component player controller and what this is going to do it's going to get a reference to a player controller script on our game object but we need to add a special check if player controller does not equal null and then we want to put our activate power up inside here what this is going to do is, if something that isn't a player hits our pickup, we don't want to apply an effect to it. So if something like an enemy, or a rock, or your mother, if any of those hit this power up, we don't want to apply a modifier. 
We only want it to happen if it's the player. We know we have a player controller here, so now we, all we have to do is add our player controller into our activate power up method. And that's all the code for now, so let's head back into Unity. If we head to our power up pickup, you'll notice that we now have a power up modifier that we can add in here. Let's head over to our project assets, right click, create, and if you notice up the top, we now have power up effect. So we can hover over that and we have health modifier. If we left click on that, we can now create a health modifier. Perfect, and now up here, we can give this a value of how much health we want to restore. So let's do two. And back in our power up pickup, let's drag our health modifier small into here and let's hit play. So you'll notice that my health is currently halfway. And if we walk over, there we go. Our health is increased and the pickup is destroyed and we still have our pickup comment from before. To expand on this, all we have to do is create power up effect health modifier. And if we go power up pickup and replace this, and let's give this a value of, how about something big like eight? If we now collide with it, it maxes out our health. Now these values don't just have to be positive, it works with negative values too. And we can do negative three. And now if we look at power up pickup, drag it in again, press play, you'll see that now we lose health this time. And it's super easy to create these pickups. We can just make a couple copies of these. So this one is our small and this one is our large. Let's hit play. So our health is at halfway. We'll hit this one, we'll lose some health. We'll hit the small one, we'll gain a little bit back. And if we hit the big one, we'll fill our health bar. To show you how simple it is to build on this system, let's make a speed power up. So we'll go to our scripts, we'll right click, create, C sharp script, speed modifier. Let's double click that to open it. Once again, we can get rid of our start and update methods and our mono behavior and derive from power up modifier. So let's go public override void activate game object target. Now since this is the speed modifier, we're going to want to affect the speed, so which will probably be a public int speed value. Now we want our var player controller equals target dot get component player controller. Now player controller dot movement speed plus equals speed value. There we go. Don't forget to add our create asset menu up the top. Menu name equals power up effect slash speed modifier. And that's everything. Let's save that and head back in. Once again, in our project, we'll right click on our assets, create power up effect. And now we have a second one we can choose from, which is our speed modifier. And we'll do this something like seven. What are we? Our base is five, so we're doubling our speed. Now let's go power up the one in the middle. Speed pickup's normally blue, so let's do that. And all we have to do is drag in our speed modifier and hit play. So this is our base movement speed. And if we hit this power up, as you can see, we're now moving a lot faster. But you also might notice that this power up isn't wearing off. And if you're playing or you're making a game where you don't want these power ups to be permanent, then this is an issue for you. Let's fix that now. Let's head to our script. We're going to right click and we're going to make a new C sharp script and we're going to call this timed power up modifier. Let's double click that and open it up. All right, you know the drill. We can get rid of our start and update methods and our mono behavior, and we're still going to derive from power up modifier. But instead, we're actually going to put abstract out the front again. The reason we do this is we want to give our power ups two different options depending on what they want to do. So for example, our health modifiers can inherit from our power up modifier because they're permanent one time effects. Things like our speed modifier, which are only going to have a set duration, they can inherit from our timed power up modifier now. And that's going to allow us to give uh, a bunch more customization and control over what we want. Now, our timed power up modifier 
it's going to have a few things. A public float power up time in seconds. And this is how long our power up is going to be applied to our character. We're also going to want a public abstract void called deactivate, which will take our game object target. So we have our power up modifier, which gives us our activate method and our time power up is going to give us our deactivate. So in the instance of our speed modifier, activate will apply the speed effect and double our speed and the deactivate will undo that effect and return it to normal. We're also going to need one more thing, say public I enumerator start power up countdown with a game object target. If you're unfamiliar with I enumerators, basically that allows us to run coroutines and coroutines allow us to have pauses. It allows us to wait a certain amount of time before running certain code. So in this case, we can write yield return new wait for seconds power up time in seconds. Now the syntax is a little weird, but basically this is just going to wait the amount of time we specify. Then after that, we want to remove our effect so we can write deactivate and put in our target. Now if we head back to speed modifier, you'll notice that we have a red underline and that's because it wants us to implement our deactivate method. So let's do that now. Public override void deactivate game object target and all we want to do is basically copy what we've done in our activate method we can copy that and paste it here but instead of adding our speed value we want to subtract it and if we look at our health modifier it still doesn't want a deactivate method because it's just inheriting from power up modifier now that we've filled out our speed modifier we can head over to our player controller and in our apply power up modifier var timed power up modifier equals power up modifier as timed power up modifier. Now, for those unfamiliar with this, what this means is we're going to check if the power up we've passed in is a time power up modifier. Not all effects that we pass in are actually going to be timed. For example, we might pass in a health modifier and we're not going to want to wait any time for that. We're going to want to apply it straight away. So we'll go if timed power up modifier does not equal null, which means that the effect we're applying does have a timer. We're going to go start coroutine timed power up modifier dot start power up countdown and pass in our game object. And that's everything. So what's going to happen is just like before, our power up pickup is going to apply an effect to our character. Our character is going to activate that effect. We're then going to check if that modifier does have a timer. If it does, we're going to start a coroutine, which waits a certain amount of time. And then it's going to deactivate, which undoes the effect that we apply to our character at the start. Now, the only thing we need to do is go to our speed modifier large and give it a duration. So let's give it four. And if you have a look at our health modifiers that we made earlier, none of them actually have a timer. And that's because they inherit from our base power up. But our speed modifier, which inherits from our timed modifier, does have our power up timer here. Now let's hit play. And if you have a look, this is our default movement speed. And if you have a look in the controller, it has our movement speed is five. We hit the power up. Our speed is now 12. It's very fast. And now it's returned to five and we're back to our normal speed. Now, there's one last thing I want to show you. Some games have power-ups that don't activate straight away. Sometimes you hold the power-up and then the player can activate it at a later time. So I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. In our player controller script, we're going to need a reference to our power-up modifier. So let's go power-up modifier, current power-up modifier. We're now going to need a way to store this. So we'll go public void door power up, power up modifier, new power up modifier, and we can go current power up modifier equals new power up modifier. And we'll head to our power up pickup. And instead of applying our power up straight away, 
we're going to replace this with store power up. So how do we apply this power up? All we do is we go to our player controller, add a new method called void, activate power up. If current power up modifier does not equal null, the reason we do this is because a player might not be holding a power up at the moment and we don't want to try and activate one that it doesn't have. Then all we're going to do is use the apply power up modifier method that we made earlier. Apply power up modifier and we're going to use our current power up modifier. And last but not least, we're going to go current power up modifier and we're going to set it to null. And the reason we do this is because this is us consuming our power up. We don't want to be able to use it over and over again. Last but not least, in our update method, we need a button to press to activate our ability. So we'll go if input dot get access. And I'm going to use jump because that's spacebar, but you can use whatever you want. If that's greater than zero, we will call our activate power up. And that's everything. Head back into Unity, press play. So this is our default movement speed. And if we hit our power up, it still stays the same, we're still our normal speed, but if I now press spacebar, we now increase our movement speed and we're going a lot faster. And after our four seconds, we'll return to our normal movement speed. And that's all for this tutorial. There's plenty you can do to add on to this system, like adding more power-ups or adding UI to show what power-up the player has, or even add some particles. I hope you found this video useful and learned something new. Don't forget to leave a comment on any other topics you'd like to see me do tutorials on in the future. And if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments too, and I'll do my best to answer them all for you. That's all for this video, so I'll see you all in the next one. Cheers, everyone.